The Queen were one of the most influential New Zealand bands of the post-punk era. They formed in the town of Dunedin in 1978, when Hamish Kilgore, drums, and his brother David, guitar, recruited David's school friend, guitarist Peter Gutridge. Soon after, they opened, <laughs> they opened for New Zealand punk rockers' enemy. The Clean were one of the first bands in the country to play original material. They carved out a distinctive, noisy, but melodic sound, distinguished by David's screeching, distorted guitar. When the Kilgore brothers decided <laughs> to relocate the band to Auckland in 1979, Gutridge had already left the lineup. The Clean played with a rotating bassist before David quit the band and moved back to Dunedin. Once he was back home, he was introduced to bassist Robert Scott, and the two started playing together. News of his brother's new musical rela relationship prompted Hamish to move back to Dunedin and begin to clean again. In early 1980, the group began playing around town in earnest. In early 1981, a fan named Roger Shepard began Flying Nun Records to release a single by the clean, Tally Ho, with its jagged guitar, sweet melody, and persistent organ, Tally Ho reached number 19 on the charts. As they prepared to record their first album, they discovered that the small amount of new, of new Zealand <laughs> engineers didn't care for the band's material. The clean didn't fight. They backed down, deciding to record on a four track under the guidance of Chris Knox and Doug Hood. In November, the Boodle... <laughs> In November, the Boodle... <laughs> In November... <laughs> okay. In November, the Boodle 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 EP was released. It surprised every observer by climbing to number four on the New Zealand charts. <laughs> Boodle and the 1982 EP Great Sounds Great captured the quirky side of the clean sound since they did not have the technology to replicate the band's roaring live sound. Later in 1982, the group released their loudest single yet, Getting Older. Soon after its release, David Kilgore exited the band, moving back to Dunedin. Robert, Skirt, Robert Scott left after David's departure, forming a band of his own, The Bats. Hamish, Hamish Kilgore moved to Christchurch, where Flying Nun Records was located and bought his own four-track. After Hamish had begun writing and recording, David came up to Christchurch to help finish up the solo tracks, as well as to record some clean songs. The resulting music, released under the name The Great Unwashed, <laughs> was collected on the album Clean Out of Our Minds. The music was a departure from the clean's punk-injected sound. Instead, it was folkier and more acoustic. To promote the record, the Kilgore... The Kilgores reunited with Peter Gutridge while still using the name The Great Unwashed. On the ensuing tour, the band concentrated on Gutridge's backlog of material. At the beginning of 1984, they recorded an EP called Singles, which earned quite a bit of airplay and sales. Bassist Ross Humphreys was added so David Kilgore and Gutridge could both play guitar. Yet the Great Unwashed wound up breaking up within a year. Hamish Kilgore formed Bailter Space with guitarist Alistair Parker. Gutridge began developing a new band called Snapper, and David stopped playing for a few years. The Clean, the lineup featuring Robert Scott, reunited in 1988 for two concerts in London, 
a five-song EP, Cold From This Shows, was released a year later. The members of the band were encouraged by the results and decided to embark on a world tour. After the tour ended, the band recorded a new album, which was more straightforward and pop-oriented than their previous material. The record, Vehicle, was released in the spring of 1990, and the band supported its release with a world tour. After the tour's complete... Wait, I thought I already read... No, no, it's different. After the tour's completion, the band split again. David Kil <laughs> David Kilgore went solo, Scott returned to the Bats, and Hamish Kilgore moved to New York and formed the Mad Scene. Like lovers who could never quite say goodbye, the group reunited in 1994 to record a new album. Modern Rock was released in late 1995, followed by Unknown Country in 1996 after which the trio went their separate ways yet again. After spending after time spent away working on solo projects and with other bands, the trio got back together in 2000 for a festival in their Dunedin hometown. They stayed together for more shows and a new album, Getaway, which, which was released in 2001 on Merch and featured guests Ira Kaplan and Georgia Hubley of Yellow Tango. Two years later, Flying Nun and Merge co-released a career-spanning collection called Anthology. Over the, over the next few years, the band kept playing shows, a few of which were documented on limited edition live albums. 2001's Slush Fund, 2003's Sid's Pink Wiring Sid's Pink Wiring System and 2008's Mashed. The trio ended the decade with a new studio album, 2009's Mr. Pop, and spent the next year playing a select set of concerts around the globe. Once back home, they began sessions for a possible new album but abandoned them after the catastrophic earthquake that hit New Zealand in early 2011. They got back together to tour the next year, playing some shows in the U.S. They did the same in 2014, and then in early 2015, played two concerts in Australia. That was, uh, not, I didn't write that. That was by Stephen Thomas Erlewine. So thank you very much. Um, when you guys found out some of those details, like all the connections between the different New Zealand bands, so did I. I was right there with you, discovering for the first time one of my favorite bands, and probably one of yours. Thank you for coming to my speech therapy. <laughs>